Thank you, Amos. All right, from transportation to medicine, our next founder will discuss how her company, Verge Genomics, is using machine learning, learning to transform drug discovery and find new cures for patients. Please welcome CEO and co-founder of Verge Genomics, Alex Zhang. Please help me welcome her to the stage, Alex. I first started Verge when I realized how broken drug discovery is. It's still largely a guessing game where it costs billions of dollars just to find a single new drug. Yet we're in this really amazing moment in time right now where advances in genomics are finally allowing us to take the guesswork out of drug discovery. And so I started Verge really with the vision of building the world's first pharmaceutical company that could use machine learning to turn drug discovery into a scalable process and expand it eventually to identify cures for every human disease out there without an available treatment. I turned first to neuroscience, where the drug discovery problem has turned into a crisis. Alzheimer's disease is the only disease in the world with growing death rates over the last decade. And neurodegeneration will become our generation's biggest medical problem. So why can't we figure it out? It's because these diseases are simply too complex to solve by serendipity in the traditional drug discovery process. In fact, just in the last year, there have been seven major pharma failures in Alzheimer's disease, over a billion dollars each. And just last January, Pfizer completely shuttered its entire neuroscience division, laying off over 300 employees. Yet, I would pose that we're actually in what I call a money ball moment for neuroscience, because there are huge technological advances that are occurring at the exact same moment that many of the huge incumbents are leaving the field, allowing disruptive players to really change the landscape of these huge untapped markets. And this is only now possible because fundamental advances in sequencing hardware have rapidly driven down the cost of sequencing a single genome even faster than the cost of computing. And just like the decline in cost, computing costs have fundamentally changed the way we interact with the physical world, so will the availability of all of this data change the way we think about disease. At Verge, we've capitalized on this trend by creating one of the first full-stack AI drug companies, which combines not only the front end of internal machine learning, but also the back end of our own in-house drug discovery labs. We create all of our own internal proprietary patient data sets, which feed into these algorithms that mine this data and identify new genes that are at the root cause of disease. We've been able to build a robust drug portfolio of over six drugs in development in six different diseases. And importantly, we test each one of our predictions in our own labs, which generates data that feeds back in. We started with a first use case in a disease called ALS, which is a rapidly progressing neurodegenerative disorder that results in complete paralysis for its patients. Unfortunately, because these patients typically die within three years of diagnosis, under our current drug discovery system, they simply won't get the drugs that they need. Today, I'm excited to show you data indicating that we've found drugs that seem to slow this disease. I'm about to show you data, um, of, I'm about to show you a video of three mice with ALS. You can see that similar to the patient I showed you previously, these drugs start, these uh, mice start losing their ability to walk because their muscles start wasting away. What's been incredibly exciting for us is we found when we take a drug entirely predicted by our AI platform and put them in these exact same mice with ALS, we can actually 
dramatically restore their ability to walk again. This is the first time in history where a drug discovered entirely by an AI platform has rescued disease progression in mice with ALS. And it's just not just the only drug we have. This is actually one of four drugs we found just in the last year and one of six different diseases that's in our pipeline right now. What is important is that it just doesn't work in just mice. We've shown that our drug works in humans as well. We're able to actually test our drugs in real human brains using technology that allows us to take skin cells from patients with disease and actually turn them into their own brains in a dish. By combining with this with robotics, we can start to see if our drugs work in cheap, scalable human trials before we even enter the clinic. This is one of the systems we have in-house to test our drugs. We plate the patient brain cells in this dish and we treat each well with a drug predicted by our AI. This robotic arm comes along every day, retrieves a plate from the incubator, and places it underneath the microscope at the exact same location. This microscope takes pictures of each well up to multiple times a day, enabling us to recreate the live growth and degeneration of individual living brain cells from real patients with disease. So what you see here is a real time-lapse video of brain cells from a patient with ALS. And you can see that over time, these tiny white lines disintegrate into tiny white dots. And those indicate that the neuron is dying. This death is what causes ALS. We can then take these and actually quantify these in these graphs, where on the x-axis, you have time, and the y-axis represents survival. You can see here that on the red line, ALS patient brains tend to die off much more quickly than healthy patient brains on the black line. What's been incredibly exciting in the last few months is what we've shown when we take this same drug and we treat them on the very same ALS patient brain cells, we can actually fully rescue them from dying. In fact, restoring them to the same levels as healthy patient brain cells. To get to the exact same point would have taken, on average, most pharma companies over five years and $260 million. And that's because they're paying for failure. They brute force test tens of thousands of compounds just to guess at one that works, with an average success rate of less than 0.1%. By using AI to predict which drugs that work before we even enter the lab, we've been able to achieve a success rate of 15%, which is over an order of magnitude greater than the average pharma success rate. We've been able to do this with only a million and a half dollars, and, or a million, uh, four million dollars in a year and a half, indicating that we can start scaling this to look for dozens of drugs in parallel. And one of the major reasons we've been so successful, even in just the first disease, is because we really focused on breaking down the silos between computation and biology. We really set out from day one to create a truly integrated team, combining some of the top talent in physics, mathematics, and machine learning, that sits side by side with experienced drug hunters that have over 100 years of experience together, developing many of the blockbusters that are on market today. We've also created a huge data advantage by generating our own internal proprietary patient data sets. We've teamed up with over a dozen different hospitals, brain banks, and labs to source and sequence thousands of different patient brain tissues and have created to date the largest known database of genomics data for ALS and Parkinson's patients. And while this is important for the first iteration, even more importantly, we generate for each prediction huge amounts of validation data that not only continuously grows our database, but feeds back in and retrains the algorithms so that they improve with every turn of the wheel across many different diseases at once. And as we've uh, approved the platform, we're moving full steam ahead with expanding across many different diseases with huge markets on unmet patient needs. 
We've started with neurodegeneration, but we've also started moving into neuropsychiatric diseases, including schizophrenia and depression, and are planning on expanding into general brain disorders, and then eventually beyond into non-CNS diseases, so all complex diseases out there without treatments. Really, with the vision of enabling a world one day where every disease out there and every patient out there has an available treatment that they need. Thank you.